Would you like to embellish a pour, but you don't think you can draw? Not a problem. Let's work on a tree. Hi everyone, it's Miriam with the Y from Miriam's Nature. This is part one of a two-part series. Two videos back, I showed you how to embellish a pour and turn it into stones. In this series, I'm going to show you how to make a tree. Now don't panic if drawing is not in your wheelhouse. You don't need any drawing talent or skill, I promise. I found us an easy solution. Now, before we get to that, I want to show off the work of a couple of people who watched the Stones videos and made stones of their own. I thought it was so kind of these talented artists to post their work in groups they belong to and mention me as their inspiration. We YouTube video makers appreciate that type of acknowledgement more than you know. And I want to really thank these four also for letting me share their work with you. Now, I'll be periodically showing you work from other talented artists like these four ladies. If you'd like to maybe see your work in an upcoming video, tag me on Facebook when you post something you learned here and also join my new group, Miriam's Fluid Art Tribe on Facebook and post what you do there. You never know, you might be on Candid Camera. Oh wait, no, that's, that's another show. <laughs> wait, no, you might be in a Fluid Art YouTube video. <laughs> yeah, that's it, that's what you'll be in. <laughs> now to the pour for our tree. Like the stones, I want my tree to look like a tree that had a dirty pour dribbled all over it. I want my tree to be brown and tan, so for my colors, I'm going to use DecoArt Americana. I'll use light buttermilk, warm beige, true ochre, honey brown, burnt sienna, and burnt umber. For my substrate, I chose a piece of MDF and I've taped the back edges to protect them from drips and I've gone ahead and gessoed the front. Given that I'm going to be using browns mostly, I probably didn't need to worry so much about the color showing through, but I like to protect MDF because it can warp. It probably won't, but you know, better safe than sorry. I'm going to be using DecoArt's pouring medium to thin my paints, and I'll be using OGX's coconut milk hair serum as my cell producer. Now, DecoArt recommends starting out with one part medium to one part paint when using paints of this consistency. And the fact that Americana is a well pigmented paint. I'm going to change the ratio to one part paint and two to even three parts medium. We'll see how that goes. Seriously, I wish everything else mixed in this well. And what I really can say is that that ratio of about one part paint to roughly, I mean, I didn't really measure, measure, I eyeballed it more to two parts medium, I have the perfect consistency. So no water needed, I'm there. I really want to have this be more toward the light end from light to dark because I want this to contrast really well against black. So I don't want a lot of this color, for example, the um, burnt umber because it's really dark. But I do want it to give some definition to some of the cells, so I definitely do need a dark in there as well. I am definitely going to need a second cup of the buttermilk. That's my lightest color, so I do want a lot of it. 
it is really almost silly how well this medium mixes into paint. It's like mixing water into water. It really loves paint and just wants to blend with it without any difficulty. There are no lumps ever, nothing. It's just, mm. Look how quick that is. That just blows my mind. I let that be real time so that you could see. It's just shocking to me. Every time. I never get tired of it. Ugh. I mean, really, it's almost done. I, I mean, I just out of force of habit, I will mix for a couple of minutes because that's just my precaution to make sure that the paint is really well mixed, but I'm really reasonably sure that it's already well mixed, but I just, oh, <laughs> I can't get over that. The warm beige is feeling a little flesh tony pinky to me, so I think I'm going to add ochre to it just to warm it up even more. Yeah, that's more what I was hoping for. Now Americana probably has this color already because they have the hugest selection of colors I've ever seen, but I did not get that. And then a drop or two of dimethicone to encourage a few cells, then stir it in really well. And now that it's all mixed into my colors, I'm ready to make my dirty cups. My canvas is 12 by 12 inches, meaning it's 144 square inches. And that means that to get decent coverage, I need 144 milliliters of paint, which is just about five ounces of paint. So what I'm going to do is make a slightly lighter dirty cup, about three ounces of a lighter mix first, pour that all out, and then kind of blend in a slightly darker dirty cup that I'll mix up once I'd finished pouring the first one. What's wonderful about this particular mix is that I don't really have to worry about colors making mud. This is already brown. <laughs> so, oh, there's that much mud to worry about by definition of the colors. So I don't have to worry quite as much as I would about putting green on top of purple and that sort of thing. Okay, that's about three ounces. I'm going to stop there, pour this, see where we end up, and then what I need to mix up for the rest. All right, I have a pair of gently used gloves on and my substrate is out and let us do this. So. My plan is just to sort of pour back and forth this way and just to get paint down on this canvas. I don't want to go all the way to the edge because I want to be able to tilt. I see cells coming up so that is certainly a relief. And now that I've got that down I'm going to use the same cup to mix up another cup that has more of a dark palette, less of the light color. And since the last colors in are the first out, I'm going to work sort of dark to light in making this cup and top it off with the lightest color. And I'm pretty sure that that is going to be enough to get us by. So now I'm going to continue the pour and get some of the darker colors here. So I'll definitely be tilting that way. Okay, I'm going to leave some in the cup in case I need to fill in anything. And let us get our tilt on now. Not seeing that many cells down here. And that's probably because I added a little extra paint to the colors to top them off. 
I didn't add more dimethicone. And that's okay too. This is so pretty. This is going to be exactly what I kind of wanted for this particular piece. Now what's sad is that a lot of this is going to get covered up with what I want to do. For what I want to accomplish, a lot will get covered up. But I am going to let some of this run off. Coating my edges is not so critical because they'll end up being painted black. But I do want to get the entire surface covered because I don't know where my blank spots, where I can afford not to have coverage yet. Some of you are thinking, I have no idea what she's talking about. Don't worry about it. It'll make sense later. <laughs> There's definitely enough pattern here. And still got a little pore here. Fill in this corner. So the entire canvas is covered, which is all I really needed. Overall, I'm really happy with this. I'm happy with all the texture. I love the marbling, and I think it's going to work perfectly for what I have in mind. The only little thing that I want to do something about is this area right here is a little too solidly white. So I'm going to fill that in a little bit right here, that white patch for what this is going to be will not work. I mean, for me. So I'm just picking up a little bit of color off the side with a little bamboo skewer. And I'm just going to write in the white with that color just to sort of darken it up a little bit. I'll give it a little bit more variety than just that solid band. It would stick out a little bit too much. Yeah. Much better. You don't see it as much. Awesome. That'll be just fine. I love this, and I'm, I know that a lot of what I'm going to be using is going to be here. This will probably not get used so much, so the fact that this area got a little... It's kind of funny to say muddy when the whole thing is brown, but this area down here is a little kind of bland, but I, I don't need to do much about it because it's going to get covered up anyway. So I think everything else is just fine. So I'm going to let this dry and we'll see you when it's ready to do the next thing. What's awesome about this pour is that it's pretty monochromatic, so all the wasted paint can be gathered up and saved because it'll be a nice color. So I'm gonna do that. Definitely save all that. No reason to let that go to waste. This dried beautifully. And I've gone ahead and cleaned off any spots of dimethicone residue. I do that by wiping down the painting with a damp towel and a little dish soap. And then I wipe it down again with the same damp towel with the soap removed. Okay, let's make our tree. Oh, wait a minute. This is supposed to be a cliffhanger. What kind of tease would I be if I told you the secret to the tree now? You can do it. You can wait until Sunday to find out how we make the tree. All right, so subscribe if you haven't already. Share this with your friends and give me a thumbs up to let me know that you're looking forward to part two. Go let your creative natures shine. <laughs>
See you in two days. It won't be so long. Bye now.